first thing, if you look here, it asks you basically to calculate the energy in joules. So it's asking for energy, and it gives us wavelength. Now, this problem is actually quite complicated, whether you realize it or not. Okay, first, is there, is there an equation that relates wavelength and energy in one, uh, one shot? There shouldn't be. Your two equations are this. You've got, you've got C is equal to wavelength times frequency. Then you've got energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. Those are your two equations. Now, if you've got wavelength, okay, you have to remember first that C is a constant. So you've got two out of the three num variables for this equation. So you can just solve for frequency. Once you solve for frequency, the next step is to plug it in here. Because again, H is a constant. It's a given value always. So you can plug it in here. Then you've got two out of the three variables. And you just solve for E. OK? Now, there is one problem, though. And we'll get to this in a second. First. Why don't we solve for frequency? So maybe you even want to break it down to the steps. Step one, okay, we're going to solve for frequency. Now, I'm going to do the same thing to this equation that I just showed you. We're going to just change it right here, so divide by wavelength. And your new equation is C is over wavelength is equal to frequency. Any questions on, on how that just happened? Same thing I just did in the other equation. The next step, though, remember that C is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. What is our wavelength given to us then? See it? It's nanometers, right? So, so this is a problem. It's given to us in nanometers. Meters and nanometers are not the same thing. So we have to go back to dimensional analysis to do this one. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. This conversion is pretty, pretty darn simple. All right? One nanometer is equal to 10 to the ninth meters. Or pardon me. 10 to the ninth nanometers is equal to one meter. All right? So all you've got to do, we're going to convert. Actually, why don't we convert this to meters? All right? That'll be our step. So we're just going to go 22.5 nanometers. Okay? It's one step. Put nanometers on the bottom. Meters goes on top. You should be writing this down, all of you. Okay, because there's going to be a lot of problems like this. Now, I just told you one meter is equal to 10 to the ninth nanometers. That is a conversion you will probably have to remember, which we'll work on more. And it's a little trick you're going to have to pay attention to, like on a test or a quiz or something. I won't do it intentionally, but there might be a problem where you're given frequency in nanometers because that's pretty standard. But the speed of light is in meters per second, and you're going to have to be aware of converting between those. So now uh, we could just rewrite this. Uh, we know the answer is going to be 22.5 times 10 to the negative ninth, so we'll just make it 2.25 times 10 to the what? What do we do? We move the decimal over one spot to the left. What does that make it? Does it, does it make it negative 8 or negative 10? Negative 10. You sure? Negative 8. Negative 8. Why is it negative? Because this is, I just did it. Remember, if you divide by an ex exponent like that, you make it negative. Okay? Or you can do it in your calculator. I don't care. Because it's really, really small. Just, just type it into your calculator and you'll see. Well, this was 22.5 times 10 to the negative ninth here. Are you talking about up here? Yeah. Oh, we'll just set this on the bottom. When you divide by an exponent, you're basically subtracting. So 0 minus 9 is negative 9. All right, now, back to, and see, this is, this is the type of stuff that you've got to not let throw you off the problem. Okay. This is, the, this is what I'm talking about in chemistry. Everything kind of builds together. We didn't do dimensional analysis for no reason. You, we'll be coming back to that all year. Okay? And it's just going to have to be something you get used to doing. This is a good example. All right? Now, we've got the speed of light 
So we'll just plug in our variables now. 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We're going to plug in our wavelength, which is 2.25 times 10 to the negative eighth meters. That will give us frequency. Do not forget, you must put parentheses around these when you type them into your calculator. Now, will someone do this? I don't have a calculator currently handy. <coughs> and then while you're doing this, make sure you see that your meters will cancel out and you'll be left with one over seconds as your unit, which is hertz, which is frequency, which is exactly what we want. So, anybody yet? One times what? Yeah, all right. So one point three 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 three. All right. So we'll say one point three three times ten to the negative sixteenth. Okay, one over seconds is our unit. That's equal to frequency. All we did was type it into our calculator to solve that. That's it. Now, we've got frequency. This was step one. Step one is done. That was step one. How can the frequency be so small? It's really small. So it's a really, really big wavelength, isn't it? Yes, it is. Like if you look at the thing, it doesn't go that small. Don't even have negative signs. Now. Are there any questions at this point? No. Yes. Okay. Whenever you're doing like uh, exponent division. Yes. Okay. You're supposed to subtract them. So eight minus negative eight. So it should be positive sixteen. She's correct. Eight minus negative eight should be what? Yes. Dina, you told me the wrong number. Let's see. Someone give me a calculator. I'll do it. Now, first thing. Hey, first thing. Let's go over this again to make sure you understand how you're typing stuff in. 3.0 times 10 to the eighth in parentheses. Okay? Every time you have to do that. Now. You're then going to divide by, in parentheses again. I'll delete. I'm just doing this in the calculator. Now, you're going to divide by 2.25 times 10 to the negative eighth, okay? In parentheses again, the whole thing. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, so you'll get 1.333333 times 10 to the 16th, not negative 16th. Oh, let's just say negative. I just misheard you. Man. Sorry. Now, the whole idea here, though, beside that, do you understand? All we did, we converted this to meters because we had to. Okay, we converted our wavelength to meters because our constant was in meters. Does everybody understand why we did that part of this? To to work with units together you must have them be the same unit. You can't have nanometers and meters and use a problem with both of them. That You have to have them be the same. So that's why we converted one. We then simply plugged in our variables to an equation, just like you do in algebra every day. Okay? It just, instead of it being x and y, it's c, lambda, and nu. Still variables, makes no difference. All we then did was a math problem where we type stuff into a calculator and divide it. That's it. So don't go thinking this is, is far more than what it really is. Yes? Is that always going to be the equation? For like yes, the, the, this is always this equation. This is always this equation. I'll give those to you, okay? Give it to us on a test? Yeah, I told you this. Uh, the numbers? Yeah. Yeah, I told you. I'm giving you the equations and the constants. I don't expect you to memorize those. Now, second step. Shh. Second step now. Step two. You've got, you've got frequency, that's why I'm writing on another page. Okay, we've got our frequency. 
and we need to find energy. Remember, the initial problem asked us to find energy. Now we can. We have frequency. We know our equation for energy is E is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. Yes? What's that 1016 H? Is it H2? That's, that's Hertz, HZ. Oh. Now, all right, our energy is just simply, this part's easy. All you do, Planck's constant. Now remember, Planck's constant is H is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And that, again, is something I will give you. It's given, okay? You have it written in your notes. I'm going to give it to you on every test or quiz you ever do. So I don't expect you to memorize it. Now, all you do, this is really simple. Just plug stuff in. Six point six two four. Oh, sorry. I've seen it as six point six two six. That's how I memorized it. Yeah, I know. Now I'm gonna rewrite so you don't get confused. Hertz, remember, is one over seconds. I'm gonna write it as one over seconds here so that we can cancel our seconds out to just be left with joules. Does ever does that make sense? Because this is joules times seconds. This is one over seconds, so seconds cancels out and you're left just with joules, which is our energy unit. So you now just simply have to do 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times the frequency, 1.33 times 10 to the 16. What was it? Times 10 to the negative 18th. All right. And that is your energy.